Georgia, 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 Georgia. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Micah Body, and this is All Eyes on Georgia, episode two. And I'm extremely honored today to uh, welcome Maynard Eaton to our virtual studio here. And um, Maynard is uh, an eight time Emmy Award winning Atlanta journalist. He's been reporting on Atlanta civil rights and Georgia politics for 40 years now. Um, he's also the National Communications Director for the um, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He's a gifted interview, his show, uh, he's the host of Talk To Me, it's excellent. Um, and he's got connections to community television uh, in Georgia with uh, People TV and the Atlanta Video Network. So um, just, just thrilled you could make the time uh, today, Maynard. Thank you, Michael, appreciate it. I've never been on a camera in Vermont. <laughs> yeah, well, also on the World Wide Web. So, okay. um, well, I, and I actually, I've been uh, visiting um, uh, with uh, uh, the Georgia Public Access Station. So hope, hoping we uh, get some traction down there because this is, uh, there's been, been some really good conversations already. Good. Um, and, and I mean, the big news this week is, is voting started Monday. Um, yes. And I'm, I'm just wondering if you, you've got your plan to vote figured out and what, what your options are. If, the, if you have an absentee option, you have an early option, you have a day of option. How's that, how's it, how, how are the rules there for, for how to get your vote in? Well, personally, I mailed my absentee ballot yesterday. Uh, nice. So it's done and I'm sitting back watching the frenzy early voting. Uh, but it's, uh, that's the key to this whole thing. This whole runoff is Who's going to turn out to vote? That's the question. That's what they're churning away at, trying to uh, get folks back to the polls. And particularly in the black community, because um, the numbers often dwindle when uh, on runoffs or returning to the polls. Uh, this has been such a frenzied year with voting, special elections, uh, presidential elections, all that. So to get them back again is going to be a, a feat. Uh, but the, the enthusiasm seems to be there. Uh, uh, it's a, um, and the commercials are certainly driving home the point of, of voting, that's for sure. Right. And yeah, the dynamic is a little different than your typical runoff where um, uh, re Republicans tend to, tend to show up for every, every <laughs> vote, for dog catcher and everything. But there's a bit of a rift on the Republican side right. um, with, uh, well, we've got just Kemp's getting, your governor's getting beat up by Donald Trump just, just about regularly. Um, certainly, your your uh, Secretary of State has taken some hits from uh, both Republican candidates, um, Leffler and Purdue. And I I don't know if 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 there is this sort of a bit of a slog on the Republican side. They're not finding the uh, unified message and the enthusiasm. Um, if that might depress their turnout, do you have any read on that? Well, you know, there's been a lot of visits visits uh, by. Vice President Kemp, uh, not Kemp, but Vice President Pence and others uh, in through Georgia try to, to rally the vote. But again, the president's uh, division uh, amongst, on one hand, criticizing, polarizing uh, verbally against uh, uh, Kemp and, uh, and Roethlisberger has made some people feel like they're going to stay home. Others have said, do not vote. Uh, further, uh, deep right wing forces have suggested not to go out and vote. So there's a turmoil within the Republican Party over the outcome of the election, whether or not to go back to the polls. Uh, there's infighting to be sure, which is interesting. And Brassensburg has been beat up a lot, uh, not only by the president, by black voter groups. Uh, he just had a ruling yesterday uh, by a federal judge suggesting that a, a, a group called Black Voting Matters, Black Voters Matter have filed suit along with, um, based on a report by investigative journalist Greg Pallast, mm. saying that 197,000 uh, Georgians had been illegally purged from the polls. Uh, the lawsuit ruling came out just, they just had a news conference a few minutes ago suggesting the judge says, it's a little too late to do that. I think you should meet again. Well, today they're saying, today they're saying, Literally. let's let's meet, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's cleanse these, uh, let's 
They got to find out who actually has been left off the polls. That's what the court said. We can't determine who has been re-registered or who has been left off illegally. So uh, they need to sit down and go over the list. Uh, uh, Black Voters Matters and other uh, civil rights attorneys want to have it done now. There's been no decision on when that's going to happen. But again, Rathensburg is getting it from Democrats and Republicans. I mean, he's guy, this is a guy who's been under the gun, believe me. But rightly so, I believe. Um, there's been some shady things on both sides. Um, the president alleges uh, voter irregularities. And four years or three years ago, uh, so did Stacey Abrams, who was challenging uh, Brian Kemp uh, to become governor, came within the eye shadow of winning. And at the time, Brian Kemp was the secretary of state. And so many alleged he uh, purged a lot of voters. Right. Voters, voter purging, voter suppression is a major, major issue in the black community. Right. Well, that that is a really fascinating aspect of these charges of voter fraud coming from the right, coming from Trump. Yeah, right. When they go to court, they really don't they don't have much. Uh, maybe what signature matching they've got. I mean, uh, but when you actually pull back um, the uh, the just the structural built in uh, voter suppression um, is is real you've you've got biden winning by point three point three percent um you've got to, you've got to wonder if there was if there was better access to the polls if that would have been two or three or four percent that's right that's true. um but it seems that the charge from the from the trump is that there's you know widespread voter fraud throw out all the votes send send some different set of electors along um may uh shake Republicans faith in in even bothering I don't I don't know you know the thing that got me about throw out the election results that I meant throwing out some Republicans who won as well <laughs> that's what got me I mean, right right it's all the same ballot that right. is that is <laughs> right. a very good point um, not, not just the president on that on that ballot that's right yeah um and actually speaking of the president he visited is it Valdo Valdosta Valdosta a couple weeks ago yes you've had Valdosta. Sarah, Sarah Palin showing up. You've had Louis Gomer. You've got Joe Biden this week showed up. Um, I'm I'm just wondering how the press is covering all these uh, visitors that have suddenly got uh, terribly interested in uh, in Georgia. Well, the whole nation is watching, including Vermont, including you. And yeah. uh, but this is such an important race. Uh, not only it will tip the balance of power in the Senate. You have two. Dyna dynamically different um, sets of, of, of candidates here on the Republican side and the, and, the, and the Democrat side. And they're funny to see them running together, you know, in a sense, they're like teammates. Right, they're um, pairs, yeah. <laughs> they're pair, and it's, uh, so yeah, th there's a national interest in it, uh, a consequential political national outcome on it, and it's all kind of centered right here in Georgia. We've, we've not had this kind of political spotlight uh, since Jimmy Carter, really. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's uh, thank you for mentioning him because um, I saw Louis Gomer is a, he's a rep from Texas, and and one of the things he said when he visited was, uh, you know, vote the Georgia way, <laughs> and I don't mean the Plains Georgia way. Like he he sort of you know actively uh, dis Georgia's president, uh, thinking that would help. Like th that that that's what really amazed me. Like he actually thought that would gain traction. Um, beating up on Jimmy Carter like that. Uh, let, let me ask you something, if you don't mind. I'm used to asking a question, not answering. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can <laughs> go both ways. Let me ask you, why Why do you have an interest in this? Why all eyes on Georgia? What's What's prompted interest of Vermont viewers and all that? Um, you know, just we we've been we've just been hammered um, the last the last four years by yeah, um, you know corruption and 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 nonsense and uh, incompetence. And then you throw a, a global pandemic on top of that where, where you, you need government to function. Um, and uh, hope, against, hope against hope that the executive branch turns to, uh, turns to be functional is, uh, I, I really did think that the Democrats would do better uh, in the Senate. Uh, and and, yeah. and um, a lot, a lot of, uh, really races that weren't terribly close um, in, uh, you know, 
across the Maine, country. Iowa, Montana. Um, I, was Doug Jones going to hold on next door in Alabama? A lot of ex excitement about Jamie Harrison. Um, so, so Biden, Biden wins, you know, clearly, but it's, it's going to be, uh, well, Republicans won too. They really did. They just lost the presidency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they gained, they gained in the house. Um, and they are, uh, they, you know, they've got a hold in the Senate right now. And, and it would be, it would be really difficult to imagine, uh, uh, President Biden working with McConnell and um, a Republican Senate. I mean, that's just, I, I actually saw an interview with David Perdue saying, you know, Mitch McConnell is, is, is a real negotiator, like uh, Joe Biden's a real negotiator and they're old friends. And yeah. they'll be, you know, he was, he was presenting a picture of, you can vote for me and Leffler and we'll still have a, we'll have a functioning Senate, we'll have a functioning government. But I, I think that's just, I think he's just making noise. I, I, I don't think we'll have a functional government unless, uh, the good people of Georgia send uh, Warnock and um, Ossoff to the to the Senate. I mean, so it's that's, uh, a, heavy, it, that's a weighty responsibility. But this race is still Trump versus uh, Biden in a sense. I mean, because they're I mean Leffler and, and and they're running right along the president's coattails. Anything he says, they do. They lap. They repeat. It's ditto the president on everything. I mean, they're so afraid to stand out on their own. And this race has become not so much about local issues. Um, so, some people have criticized Warnock, for example, you know, without thinking about reparations or anything related to the poor, something that any quote unquote black issue. And of course the system dictates, I mean, it's a national race. They're kind of controlled by the process. I mean, they, they don't make their commercials. They're committed for them. They appear in them. Um, it's, 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 again, it's become a race. It's based in Georgia but it's run by the national parties, that's for sure. And the national parties reflect the, the interests of the, uh, the Democratic Party nationally and, and President Trump uh, for Republicans. Right, and if, if Georgia did not have the uh, unique, um, you've got to hit 50%, you'd be sending Purdue and Warnock uh, to the Senate. Right. And McConnell would still be, uh, would would still be Senate Majority Leader. It would still be a, a Republican Senate. So it's it's fascinating that this uh, this uh, fifty percent threshold creates a situation, and I don't know if it's a hope against hope, where uh, potentially the Senate flips. But wouldn't uh, it's, correct me if I'm wrong? But even if it's if Warnock uh, goes and and uh, so and goes with what's his name, wouldn't they? Wouldn't the uh, Vice President Harris have the uh, tie-breaking vote? Right, right. It would be 50-50, and she'd be the 51. Yeah. Um, and that's all, you know, all Senate chairpersonships. Yeah. Every, I mean, everything would flip. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really... Um, it's consequential, isn't it? Yeah, there's never, I mean, there's never been an election like it. Um, so actually, in our last, um, our last show, we really were left with the, the unanswered question of, um, a lot of hope, you know, about would, would Florida um, vote for Biden? Would, again, Jamie Harrison, you got Doug Jones next door. Um, a lot of your, your neighbors um, didn't, uh, didn't do what Georgia did. So what was different about Georgia this year? Um, what was the sort of X factor that, um, that, that turned Georgia blue in the, in the presidential this year? Yeah. Uh, Stacey Abrams and her Fair Fight organization and uh, the other organization she has, there was an aggressive, passionate, persuasive get out the vote campaign, a, a registered campaign. Uh -huh. Thousands, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but there were more black folks, more uh, people on the polls now than ever been before. Uh, that's, there have been some uh, several hundred thousand that are registered and uh, are going to vote in this runoff, new voters. Uh, this is that. That's been the door to door, even the, in the, under the pandemic, uh, on the phone, computer, computer. Uh, I've gotten, I get calls every day. Have you voted? Have you registered? You know, it's a, it's. I think that's been the difference. It's been a. And she promised this fight uh, when she barely lost to Kemp, and she did has never stopped. Uh, created two organizations to do that, uh, and they've been passionate and uh, uh, committed to doing just that. It's been a. 
and that's all you heard about for two or three years. And it's and people have a sense of it's our obligation now to vote or to be registered to vote. Uh, there's not the fait accompli that once was. You know, many people, especially poor people or people of color in Georgia, just said it's not going to make a difference. Mm. Well, they saw how close Stacy came. It could have made it. My vote could have made a difference. You know, um, and I think now there's a you know the old South is not the old South anymore. Uh, people have moved to Atlanta and the, the parts of Georgia, uh, uh, urban Georgia, that have not from here necessarily or, or re coming back home to where their family roots are. And they have a different perspective on, on life and things. Uh, so, and, and in Atlanta, politics has always been the drumbeat of this town, always. Uh, but now, even people of, 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 of in poor communities are saying, registering, uh, not just for my councilman or, or uh, or state legislator means a difference in how the country is run. Uh, that's what I think is ringing true here in this race. For, for, for now, for this once in a lifetime, perhaps, a Georgia vote in, uh, in Auburn Avenue could make a difference in how the Congress is votes. You know, and that, that's, that's why they really, my vote could change how the Congress makes decisions, how the yeah. Senate makes decisions. And that's kind of that's interesting, you know? Right. Um, maybe this is a really good time to lay out um, the lay of the land in the metro Atlanta region. Um, so my sense is traditionally it's been a, a you know, a blue Democratic uh, center with uh, red suburbs. Um, and now uh, Atlanta's in Fulton County. Yes. DeKalb and, and Cobb and how, how just how's that? Where, where are your voting blocks in metro Atlanta? Uh, well, again, Metro Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta solidly uh, black and solidly Democrat, or it had been. Now, that's uh -huh. getting a little closer too now. Believe me, that's because there's so much uh, uh, justification. So everything's not. I mean, you have a lot of have more white council now than we ever had before. Oh, you know, okay. since, since Maynard Jackson. But the but the suburbs, Clayton County, DeKalb County, uh, those folks are moving into Atlanta. Uh, we're being pushed out to the suburbs, we being black voters. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're having an impact uh, for the first time. Remember, Gwinnett County has a black uh, chief executive. Uh, they're being run by a, a black city council person. A neighboring uh, Cobb County has a black district attorney. Uh, so they're, black folks are having an influence in the suburbs now, while, while white voters, and, and I don't know if they're necessarily Republicans or not, but white voters are having more of a muscle inside the city limits. So it's spreading, uh, huh. but it's, um, but Democrats are having a more, more influential outside the belt line, as we call it, uh, than, uh, than they have ever had before. But again, there's, there's still strong Republican support. I mean, you, you look at these rallies at the Capitol downtown, uh, these folks aren't coming from deep South Georgia. They're coming nearby. I mean, these, and these are strong right wing, ultra conservative Trump supporters who, or just less than an hour away, hmm. or around the corner. <laughs> hmm. So actually, you see uh, gentrification in the last couple decades as kind of the oh yeah the core the the shuffle. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, literally speaking, many folks of my ilk, uh, my color, can't afford to live in Atlanta anymore. Uh, you can't buy a new home is up, upwards of a million dollars in a black community. People go, what? Are you kidding? Um, it's uh. It's a major problem, a major issue, a major, and especially these COVID times, folks. I mean, what's the the stats yesterday? Over uh, seven million, uh, eight million more Americans are are, um, are are gone into poverty since the summer. That's and a lot of that's in the South. I mean, people don't, you don't have the jobs we once had. I mean, the jobs are gone. Yeah. Rents are gone. People now people are being evicted. Homelessness has gone up. Poverty has gone up. Uh, Hunger is out the roof. Right. These are not good times in urban America. And yeah. Atlanta is certainly urban America. Yeah. And Congress has done nothing since April. And nor are these candidates speaking to that. Again, I mean, they're, they're arguing back and forth with you know, who's a radical, who's not. People are hurting. We're not, we don't hear that passion. We don't hear that, that, that hey, I'm going to help you kind of spirit. Right. I, I, I'm not feeling it anyway. Right. And it, it seems as though the, um, I mean, both Purdue and Leffler have these um, really self-interested stock deals based on inside information from, um, from COVID briefings. Um, right. And that just, that seems to just continue to unravel. And 
I would, I mean, I would imagine that would turn people off incredibly given, given the context you just laid out there of, of people really hurting. I wonder how much is ringing true though. I mean, I think they hear that. Um, I tell you what, these charges back and forth, or maybe because we hear them so much, uh, it's kind of it become depth to them. It's just tender. because no, noise, yeah, yeah. Cause the commercials are all, I mean, that's all you hear, back to back to back to back to back, same ones. But I'll tell you something that's ringing true, but breaking news here. Um, a consortium of black preachers, some 85 of them have written an open letter. Uh, they're having a news conference tomorrow, an open letter to Kelly Loeffler, complaining, charging about her commercials, particularly, uh, can I read part of it, please? You mind, Michael? Oh, yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah, I'm fascinated, I'm sorry. I was just <laughs> uh, it's an open letter. Hated breath here. And it's led by Bishop, uh, Daryl Watt Winston, that Mr. Daryl Winston has led of this consortium of preachers. She said, your most recent attacks against Warnock for sermons condemning police brutality, advocating criminal justice reform, and expressing support for measures to reduce gun violence, all concerns of his congregation are beyond the pale and cannot go unaddressed by members of the faith community. The reprehensible false equivalences must stop. It continues, we call upon you, Kelly Leffler, to cease your false attacks on Reverend Warnock's social justice, theological, and faith traditions, which visualizes a just and ardent world where love, fairness, and equal justice under the law against, for marginalized people of all races is not only accepted as an authentic prophetic message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we call on you to cease and desist your false characterizations of Reverend Warnock as radical and socialist. I remember Warnock preaches at Ebenezer Baptist Church, the church once in that pulpit was Martin Luther King Jr. So uh, he's been beat up because of his association with Reverend Jeremiah Wright. And, um, it, it, there's a, uh, <laughs> this, they're suggesting that uh, Leffler's commercials are morally incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really the point she's, she's just been hammering. He's a radical, he's a radical, he's a radical. Um, and, um, I, I saw him in, in the debate really handle that quite well, tr trying to explain to her what, what scripture was. And, um, and, um, she just came back with abortion and that actually really leads me to, so here we are up in Vermont. We really don't have a white evangelical voting base and we don't have a, a, a black voting block either. So that is a subject of just, uh, total, I, I'm totally ignorant to how. You've got, you've got the black church and you've got these white evangelicals um, both praying to the same Jesus. And I'm just wondering what that dance looks like. Um, I, I, I did see that photograph of Kelly Leffler visiting right. Ebenezer Baptist. I mean, they do seem, there does seem to be some kind of, um, I don't know, a, yeah, a back that, and forth affiliation. No, it's, 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 it's really a, a, that's a, political a subject of fascination. That's political that. gamesmanship when they show up in each other's pulpits. That's what political game. That's just a look right. Uh -huh. um, she has not been back <laughs> since, since he got her appointment. So it's, it's, let me tell you where America, and particularly the South, and particularly Georgia, is still segregated and divided is in the church. Um, there's no, there's, I mean, we may talk to each other and may see each other and commiserate with each other, but on Sunday, even in your homes now, like this on COVID, it's right. a black church and a white church. Um, uh, there are black church leaders and female and, and, and uh, white church leaders, be it Christian or Catholic. So there's or, or Muslim even. There's a there's a solid division or demarcation line between the churches. Sure, they'll visit. Sure, we'll have multi uh, ethnic, multi uh, religious uh, groups to meet on certain issues. But on Sunday, when it comes to worship, you got your black preacher and you got your white preachers. Charles Stanley was a major uh, white minister, political minister here. And you, so you have your major um, super church leaders uh, and your community church leaders, but they're black or white, not together. Right. So. When, when Leffler goes to Ebenezer Baptist, she is, I mean, she's not hoping to win votes from people in the pulpits there. She is, this is, 
this is her her casting her images. I see. I'm not a racist. I went to right. that church. I mean, right. that's that's what I'm trying to sort of understand what she sees as the the payoff there. I guess. Well, it it was it was uh, <laughs> the campaign stop. It was something to make her look good. I mean, it was, she intended before she was running against Warnock, she would have used that in her commercials. Believe me. Um, to, to win some black support. And there are some, there are black Republicans here now. Make no mistake about that. Right. One, of my, one of my best friends is a radio guy named Shelly Winter. He loves Donald Trump. I mean, he's a friend, but we don't get along politically. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I just, uh, so there are black Republicans to be sure. Um, you may have seen a shot of a guy named Representative Vernon Jones being uh, lifted above the crowd, dancing, floating oh. over the crowd. He's, yeah. he's out of the cab County. He's a, uh, he once was a Democrat turned a, a Trump, Trumpster. Uh, he's applauded by some, but mostly derided by most, derided by most folks. Um, but but Leffler, well, that was a deliberate campaign stomp and something she thought she could use. Well, maybe we win a couple of votes. Now she's now it's being used against her when she talks about Warnock so bad. Well, why are you there, um, mm -hmm. so to speak? Um, the church is a powerful voting block here, a powerful force. That's why I read that letter. Uh, black preachers are more than as much as elected officials, black church leaders, um, while they might be officially nonpartisan, their congregations vote. Politics is a part of almost every sermon, particularly during this kind of season. Um, they follow their pastor. Um, that's why they're called the, the shepherds. I mean, they lead a flock, um, and they lead a flock of many of their flock to the voting polls. Black folks' interests have always, they thought or felt, have always been determined by the vote. Well, because they fought so hard to get the right to vote. Right. Uh, Democrats have let us down, many say, all along. Um, and that, that needs to be changed. Many people uh, deride the fact that they didn't, so happy to have um, uh, Barack Obama as the first black president, but they don't feel they, they, they did enough to urge him to do more for black folks. That you know they were so satisfied him being elected, not demanding uh, things get done, and like uh, LBJ said to to, uh, to somebody, uh, I forgot his name, just he says, "I know you want me to do this for you for the black community. Now make me do it. Make me right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something I don't know if it was uh, Obama's style or what, but it, it it created an incredible lull. I mean, yeah, right. people kind of said, okay, he's, he's in charge. We can go to sleep now. Um, I, 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 I doubt we'll, we'll be making that mistake again. Um, and that's sort of, you know, Trump is the, the ultimate wake up call. And uh, you've seen the disillusioned voter say, oh, this vote actually has right. some, has some power. Yeah. Um, you gotta give a, I mean, I've never seen anybody take over a party like that. I mean, you know, I grew up around the Trump era. I grew up in Jersey and went to Columbia University. In New York. So I've seen Trump's kind of, you know, uh, from afar. But to see him dominate the trickery and the gamesmanship to dominate a party. And it's, yeah. and it's just amazing. I mean, that's why I don't, I don't like Trump as a president. But I'm amazed at his, his chicanery and the way he could almost take over something. Right. And it's, it's, and it's narciss narcissism. Uh, it's just amazing how somebody who likes so, does so much for himself can get others to believe he's for them. Yep. How do yeah. you get, what has he it, done for anybody? What has it, he done for anybody other than his friends? It's quite a disturbing gift, but it, you, you do have to acknowledge yeah. it as some as some some kind of gift. Um, and and also to create um, fear within the Republican Party to cross. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, and that seems to be what Purdue and Leffler have had to the trickiest tightrope to walk right. is um, making, I guess they see how rabid his fans are and they just don't want to alienate those people is, I, yeah, I don't know. There's a bit of ma magic going on there. Well, the Republican friends I have, the black Republicans and others, not necessarily Trumpsters. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're the radical ones who wave the flag and come to those rallies. There are others who are just business Republicans, businessmen, Republicans who are not necessarily in favor of his, A, domination of the party, or B, his style. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there are those who vote Republican, those who live the Trump's lifestyle, I guess, or envy it. I mean, mm. Many of the people I see at the Trump rallies couldn't afford to eat in his restaurant. I mean, couldn't have, I mean, they've never seen Mar-a-Lago, Mar or, you know, it's just amazing how they worship this guy who 
they, they, they were, had no idea what his lifestyle was like. I mean, anyway, that's a, he's, he's, he's a, <laughs> a political miracle, but I'm glad he's gone. Right, right. But also, and, now, as you know, as, as a storyteller, though, things are going to be boring on the Biden compared for journalists, that's for sure. There's not going to be much to, much, as much to write and talk about him. <laughs> the TV yeah. era is gone, too. That I mean that that's probably part of the formula is he gives he does give the media something every day to chew on, right. and um, you know I, I I hope people enjoy being bored again. You know, <laughs> just like oh yeah, politics is boring, isn't that nice? Because um, it really you know this is what it looks like when it becomes a wing of the entertainment industry. You you that's true. That's you don't one. you don't. You don't necessarily have someone who can uh, competently uh, guide us through um, a global pandemic, say, you know. Um, how's, how's Kemp doing? How, how, is, how is your state government doing with, with COVID? I mean, uh, do, you, do you see masks when you go out? Is it what kind of person yeah, we, are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, masks are, masks are prevalent um, in most places. Um, uh, you can still eat out. Dying in, but masks are, are generally, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see it a glaring misuse of people not wearing masks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not light, but I think people are generally afraid that they're going to get it. I mean, I, I think there's a, a realization now that this, these mask things work, so let's wear them reluctantly. Um, they also want to make sure, I think, that the stores and restaurants stay open. You know, um, don't want to, I mean, there's a that was a dark period when you couldn't go to your favorite bar or restaurant and sit inside or and, and I just think it's so there's a, a realization that let's do what it takes to a for business business and to keep your jobs but also for their own self grandizement to be able to sit and have a meal outside of your, your damn house so they get small after a while I know you have a big estate up there in Vermont so they not bother you <laughs> no I think you know Atlanta's probably got the population of Vermont five times over, I would think. Um, are, are your, um, are your K through 12 schools all fully open or? or no, no, no. Okay. No, they're not. Um, in fact, the surrounding the, the county schools is closed down again. They're going to open up the Atlanta schools, I think, uh, beginning of January uh, for a test run, but they've been closed. You know, like my school's been closed. I teach at Clark Atlanta University. I've been teaching like this remotely. So it's, um, they've been cautious. I mean, there's a, in particular, you know, black folks are a little apprehensive about, um, they've been apprehensive about the disease and, and now the vaccination is something that there are, uh, you know, the, those who, uh, my, President of SCLC was mentioned yesterday, he's hesitant about getting the, getting the, the uh, vaccine, as are many black folks, which is why they think the first person to get it was a black nurse. I mean, that, that, we thought that was purposely done to, uh -huh. <laughs> to showcase a black person getting it first. Right. You know, but it harkens back to the Tuskegee Airmen and, and all that kind of stuff. Sure, people, sure. People are very wary yeah. of being experimented on by the government. Right. Let's see how this works. Right. Who, who, can, we, who, can, we, who can we give it to? Um, and also on that, well, on a, I guess a, a bit of a different and hopefully positive note, um, Atlanta hosts the CDC. Um, and is, is, it, is the CDC affiliated with Emory or, or is it, they are, uh, that's a good call. I know they're at Emory. Emory is right there in there. I mean, they're on a kind of on a, on a campus, a border in the campus of Emory, but I don't know if they're affiliated. That's, that's, that's a question I don't have an answer to right now. Right. Do you, do you think, um, Trump's real politicization of, of the CDC has hurt him in Georgia, that it's a very, you know, a, 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 an, an institution that Georgians are very proud of and that his, um, his going after him has been, uh, been negative, negative, negative for him in, in, in Georgia? Or? I think he's going after everybody, going after even Roethlisberger, who wasn't held in high esteem, particularly by the black community. You got to feel for a guy who's been beat up like that. I mean, even, even black folks are, man, this guy, his old president beat him up. And, and Kemp, for sure, they look so weak, still, uh, still support the president. I mean, they look less than men sometimes. Yeah. And the CDC's That's been made, his little, his little, uh, I don't see how this guy could, he, he took it in the CDC. I mean, to be put upon like that by somebody with that kind of power, be talked about, uh, to have your reports, now you're the leading health authority, to have your reports redacted by some president's henchmen. 
a health official of that ilk, of that power, you, you feel like a child. Yeah. It's like being told to go to the bathroom or, uh, yeah. or, or paddle. Yeah. It's just, it's humiliating. Right. Uh, and to be feel like less than a man. It's, uh, that's, that's his game, to belittle and emasculate. And um, yeah. you know, you're reminding me, uh, you reminded me a little bit of Arizona right now where, where Trump was just, you know, doing the same with McCain um, right. after, you know, even after he's passed. Um, and the, the, the people of Arizona just said, you know, you've been, you've insulted someone we're, we're very proud of long enough. And uh, um, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious if George has got some of that same dynamic going on. I don't, I wonder how much that'll play out in the election though. Um, no, that's, no, that's a story that hasn't been really played out in, in the papers or on TV yet, but how that, um, slapping down or repudiation of CDC may play out in the election. That's a good story, I go. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I know this Trump, I mean, uh, Kemp just looks like less than himself. He just looks such. <laughs> I mean, he had a news conference yesterday. He needed he, he a softer tone than he was before. But he said he had to follow the law. At least he stood tough and followed the law. I, okay. I, I, I respect him for that. But not, um, you know, kowtow it that much, you know. Right. You, can, you can see the blood stains off. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's it's really uh, it is really hard to understand why and how these Republicans that Trump goes after don't stand up for themselves better. I guess that's just yeah, there's certain just you know pride in your own person to to, right. to stand up for yourself. Um, I remember watching this uh, series called The Boss, but uh, a big city mayor of Chicago, how he can ride over people and deride people. And I guess when you have the clout of a president, you are fearful of what he can do to you. But you got to look at the mirror. You know, I mean, you got to, <laughs> you, you gotta, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's you my, know. But politics is a two way street. It can be exhilarating, but also can be uh, uh, disastrous for your personal pride. Yeah. And the, the other factor is, Trump's out the door. His his days are numbered. He doesn't have many cards left, and people are still, right? You know, tiptoeing around him. I love how he's. I mean, really, do how he's. <laughs> he's gonna walk out the door a multi millionaire based on what people are giving him. I mean, just based on his his storytelling, his his this this fantasy right. about how he still won the race. Right. He's, he's making millions from, from yep. donations. Yeah, election fraud fundraising that he he can just keep when whatever exactly. whatever's not spent. I mean, that's. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good scam. He's a hustler. He really yeah. is. Um, just I I would like to I may, and it may be the last thing we touch on because we we've, we've actually covered a ton of ground already. But um, when we were when we were talking a, a little bit about um, I guess the interaction of Christianity and politics. Um, it it seems the black church is very much uh, got a, a, a understands um, teachings of Jesus in terms of uh, social justice. And the white evangelicals have this kind of like personal salvation. It's, it's, it's a very individual, um, you know, connection. I am saved. Um, and um, I, I don't know if you do, do white evangelicals bring their faith into their politics beyond abortion? I mean, when they say pro-life, is that, do, are we talking death penalty? Are we talking COVID? Are we talking, you know, how does, how does that work? I never hear that expressed. Uh, I really don't. Uh, pro-life is anti-abortion. That's the, I mean, I never heard it expressed beyond that. Now I'm not a white evangelical, so I can't tell you. I don't, I don't you know, live in their churches, uh, but I don't hear it expressed in the media or by my colleagues or people I know uh, who are white Christians. Uh, so, um, or even never heard it expressed by anybody I've interviewed who's white, even a, a KKK member or, you know, they, they just have a one pro-life is, is that. That's um, the filter in, yeah. While in the black church, uh, in the spirit of Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement is spread throughout the South, the black church is kind of the, the headquarters for social justice, uh, talks about racial inequality, uh, poverty. That's always been, the always been kind of the, the room where civil rights and our rights, our human rights are discussed and manifested through, through uh, through the Bible, through philosophies, through you know, that kind of thing, and I'm no, I'm no uh, 
<laughs> I'm no Christian wizard, but I tell you, you grow up hearing this stuff. You might not know what the what the uh, um, the verses mean in the Bible, but you know what they're talking about. <laughs> right, right. Um, so uh, you've you've already voted. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I got mine in. Actually, do you know if does Georgia allow for processing of of mail in votes? prior to election night no 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 that has to be done after the election the, okay the, the, the day of the election no, it'll sit there so that means uh odds are more republicans will vote on the day of that's generally been the case thus far and then they'll be uh, open in the mail for the next few days right right that's been the case thus far that republicans like to show up the day of but that's not to say i mean many people there's something now, I must admit, I miss not doing it on election day. I mean, that 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 absentee ballot was not fun. Yes. It didn't, it didn't have the, the it rich pass, yeah, it was passionless. It was like, you know, this is mailing something, you know, but get, being there, doing it. See, this, yeah, there was a difference. I, I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't yeah. realize what it was, but I was I was telling my wife, I got to get it in the mail, I got to get it in the mail. But that's not like, I got to get to the polls, got to get to the polls. It's a little different, you know? Right, right. Yeah, if it's, I mean, if it's a sacred institution, it's a bit like going to church. Yeah. Um, and um, so that means if there, if those mail votes just sit, um, chances are good the Republicans will be a, ahead early, and then it'll just be we see if, as they process the mail votes, if the uh, what tend to be more blue votes, quote unquote, right. um, if those catch up and surpass. So. It'll be a long night, that's for sure. And a, yeah, yeah, and, and may, a long and a and a really a, a really a tense, anxious morning. Right, and then the post mortem. Will there be claims of fraud here? Claims of fraud there? It'll it'll it, it may, the dust may take a while to settle there. So um, it's going to continue. The the uh, the narrative has been set. So fraud, um, voter purging, voter suppression, cheating on both sides will be echoed and cried about. Right. Or, charged it's, right. it's it's the way politics has become now because of donald trump yeah and, and also because many uh, human rights civil rights folks have said that we've been cheated for too long so we'll see. right and it'll i mean we will get to see if we move with trump gone we move back to a, a situation where it's just kind of assumed that a, elections function institutions function but or we've got some permanent damage here. Um, that's I think so. But Michael, I don't think we'll ever see Trump gone until he dies. I mean, he's, he, he is such a mouthpiece now. He's such a yeah. you know uh, irritator. Plus, he he has a following, and what that's he'll keep rallying rallying them up to, for his own interests. Yep, he'll have his avenues. Yeah, uh, he, he'll have his base to go against p political leaders to uh, elect people of his ilk. You know, he, he's gonna. He, he, he does not let go of power. He loves this stuff. You know? Right, right. But I don't think he actually likes governing, so he'll get back to doing his, right. his sideshow <laughs> and um, let people that actually know what they're doing run the government because we really need some, some functionality right now. Yeah. And, uh, but we, yeah, we'll see how this vaccine rollout works. Um, hey, Maynard, it's been fantastic. I really appreciate the time. Um, <laughs> Thank you, is a uh, journalist from uh, Atlanta, and he's got a, a depth of knowledge here that's just shared with us. Um, Thank so, you for for inviting me. It's been fun. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not used um, to being on this side of it. <laughs> you you enjoy your holidays, and uh, and 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 here's to 2021, and and here's to January 5th. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Have a good weekend, Michael. Thanks. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. bye. Georgia. 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 Georgia, please, 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 please